Michael's in Houston, Texas. Hey, Michael, how are you? I am doing just fine. Thanks so much for uh, taking my call, guys. Sure. What's up? I got two things for you. Um, number one, I wanted to at least provide a testimonial for some of the advice that you're giving on here. My wife turned me on to your show about four years ago. And um, in four years, we are completely debt free. We've paid our house off. Wow. We're 36. Thank you. And um, our net worth now is about $1.2 million. Whoa! Woo! So Way to go, I have Baby really Steps Millionaire. I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It took a lot of work. It took a lot of sacrifices. But, uh, yeah, we are completely in the green. Touchdown, man. Incredible. Way to go, hero. Thank you. Thank you. So what this kind of leads me to, um, it's kind of a two-part question. Number one, as far as our retirement goes, uh, we have about $730,000 at this point um, with an investment company. And that's already been invested. And our next goal is that we're still living in the house that we bought together. It was our first house. And um, we're just starting to feel a little bit cramped, so we're looking for an upgrade. Good. So while I'm saving up enough money for the house, and let's say that I need to save up about another um, one hundred and fifty dollars to $200,000, my question for you is this. Should I feel, as I'm saving up that much money, because it's a lot, should I feel the pressure to continue putting that towards my 730000 in retirement. And then the other question is that if this is going to take me about two to three years, I'm a little bit unsure in how to invest it. And I know that you can't call the stock market. I know that you can't time it. Mm -hmm. But my biggest fear is that I invested in something and then there are two to three years from now, um, I have less than what I put into it. Yeah. So uh, the 750000 is in retirement accounts, right? Yes. Like if you take it out, you get a penalty, right? Yes. Yeah. So you can't put it in that if you want to use it to buy a house. No, no. The uh, the uh, idea was that I wanted to take that money and start to invest it somewhere else, as in open up like a secondary. So are you saying you're going to stop contributing to that retirement account to save up for this house? That was kind of my question, is that while I'm saving up for the house, should I continue to still be putting money in my retirement accounts? Or do I have your blessing to say you're in a really good place right now, um, you should put it towards the house? You're a millionaire. You don't need our blessing for anything. <laughs> but but we Thank would you. tell you as a matter of course just to continue to put 15 percent aside and above that save for your upgrade that shouldn't make or break your upgrade to lose out on that 15 percent exactly that you're investing so i would yeah on anything above that 15 percent i would be putting away and if it's two to three years that i don't i wouldn't be putting it in mutual funds that's a little bit short of a time horizon um, right. But like when we saved up for our house if it's three to five years we worked with smart investor pro we invested that and it grew it grew a little bit, which really helped us with our down payment situation. So one to three, three years, to five though, years, one to three years is a little bit tricky on the market. So here, here's That's the here's exactly the here's your, here's your probability. So you can split it up, do some of each if you want, uh, in terms of uh, whether you put it in money market or whether you put it in mutual funds. If you leave a mutual fund, a general market mutual fund, good growth stock mutual funds across the four types we talk about alone for five years, ninety six percent of the time it will make money. If you leave it alone three years, 67% of the time it'll make money. One out of three times it'll lose money. Okay. But it won't lose a lot. I mean, it might no. lose, it might lose, you know, you might put in $100,000, it might be worth 95, you know, or something. So it's not like you're going to lose all your house money, but you probably won't, <laughs> you won't make any money that's appreciable. And so that's why I said you might play the market on some of it, and some of it you might not play the market. But even by playing the market in air quotes, I'm going to be in some very conservative mutual funds and money markets. Or I'm going to be all in money markets if I just don't want to worry about it at all. Uh, but if I really want to take a little bit of risk, you might lose a few thousand dollars if you're only leaving it alone three years. Yeah. And with a high yield savings account, I mean, you're looking at a half percent. So it's not the sexiest thing, but it is guaranteed. And so you have that um, yeah. as far versus losing money in the market in a short period of time. Exactly. And the way I look at it is, you know, a typical mutual fund, year in and year out, averages 10 to 12 percent. OK, a decent, decent track record mutual fund. All right. And so it's got to do really sucky to get all the way down to a half a percent. Yeah. And so I, I personally am willing to play that. But but I don't want you to lose a little bit of money and then go, oh, I lost all my house money. You didn't lose. Like, you, instead of having 100,000, you got 95, you know, but you might have had 120. You know, too. That's the other side of it. That, yeah. That's your spread of risk. It's not all or nothing. This is not a roulette wheel. 
So you're not playing, you know, you're not playing Bitcoin, you're not playing Beanie Babies, and you're not playing gold here. This is a, a low-risk scenario. So your range of risk is really small, really small. So either way you go. But if you're going to get down under three years, I start to get nervous, and I just start to park it in money markets. Uh, if I'm in your situation, that's what I would do.